Residents in southern Indiana are demanding answers after domestic violence turned deadly. Police say Laura Russell did everything she could to protect herself, ultimately putting her safety in the hands of the courts. Police say Anthony Russell killed his estranged wife, Laura Russell, on October 6. The, the day, day before her death, prosecutors filed felony stalking charges and the motion to have Anthony arrested. Judge Michael Hensley, though, denied that arrest request. Law enforcement and court officials tell us they are reviewing their policies and procedures. We have asked Judge Hensley to speak with us multiple times. He has consistently denied those requests. And we asked Judge Hensley's clerk when he will be ready to answer to the people of Madison. She told us there is no timeline. In Tonight, a WHAS 11 news investigation. Frustration, fear, and one final cry for help. Tonight, for the first time, you're hearing a Madison, Indiana woman's plea for protection from Laura Russell herself. It is a disturbing picture of this woman's final months in a dangerous and ultimately deadly relationship. Our Shay McAllister is here now with more on what happened to Laura. A woman police say did everything she could to protect herself. Shay? Doug and Renee, the question tonight, did the justice system do everything it could to protect her or did it fail? You're about to hear Laura's desperate call for help firsthand. Laura. Laura was a happy person. She was always happy. Always happy girl. Hey, Laura. She was beautiful inside and out. She, she always had a smile. She was friendly to everybody. She thought the best of everybody at all times. Laura Russell, a mother, sister, friend, and light to all who knew her. Laura touched so many lives by her smile, by her jokes. She just infected people with the way she cared about each other. Marrying Anthony Russell in April of 2000, it was a relationship her friends say looked like anyone else's. A beautiful home outside of Madison, Indiana. Laura, a nurse, and Anthony, an elementary school teacher. Together, the pair had one daughter in a seemingly fairy tale romance. But behind closed doors, a horror story. It just still doesn't seem real. It just doesn't seem possible that it could happen, especially to Laura. We turned the pages through more than 100 court documents, revealing the struggles leading up to the fight for her life. In one case dated August of 2016, Laura files for divorce. What she thought was a clear way out. She didn't really feel like she had any place she could go to. Women living in the small town of Madison say resources for victims of abuse are few and far between. So Laura turned to police. You can hear the panic in her voice during this 911 call made on August 20th. 911, what is your emergency? Um, I have an emergency at 660 West. I need to come to the house. Police say Anthony Russell attacked his estranged wife in their home. What's going on? Domestic violence. Okay, between you and someone else? My husband. Laura told police Anthony choked her and pinned her down on the bed. Beaten and afraid, Laura frantically fought back, escaping her attacker to call for help. Is he still there? Yes, yeah, so and my daughter's in the house. I had to run to the, to the neighbor's house to get a phone. Anthony was arrested and charged with strangulation, domestic battery, and interference with reporting a crime. His $500 bond was paid by a co-worker, and he was quickly released from jail. The court issued a no-contact order, but court records show that did not keep Anthony away. Hi, Julie. I need to uh, file a report. Um, my husband, uh, who has a no-contact order um, with me, um, he last night, I made a report last night, he was uh, waiting for me uh, when I got off work and he did it again this morning. He was waiting at a gas station that he knows I'm going to pass. Waiting for Laura. He was waiting, and definitely waiting for me. Following Laura. He knows my, my pen pattern. He was there on purpose. Laura reported it to police every time. Yeah, I think she, uh, she tried all the avenues she could to stay safe. Worried for her safety, Laura's co-workers started regularly checking on her. We were concerned. We'd call her, text her. With her life on the line, Laura was running out of options and running out of time. 
She went to the Jefferson County, Indiana prosecutor who filed felony stalking charges and a motion to have Anthony Russell arrested. Judge Michael Hensley denied that motion, later saying there was not enough evidence to make an arrest. In Indiana, stalking is defined as a knowing, repeated, or continuing harassment of another person. Court documents reveal Laura reported Anthony Russell violated the protective order five times. Five times. Laura never had the chance to report a sixth. On October 7th, the day after Judge Hensley decided not to have Anthony Russell arrested, police say he killed Laura and then killed himself. In a statement, the judge called it a decision that had the most tragic result possible. A tragedy as painful as it is infuriating to the small community Laura called home. It's too late for Laura, but they got to learn from this. They got to do something that makes this not happen to somebody else. A family destroyed, a community broken. Some believe this could have all been prevented by a judge's decision. It took us weeks, but we tracked that judge down. My name's Shay McAllister with WHS Love and News. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, hi. Can I ask you a few questions? His response when we finally get him on camera is next. And tonight here at 11, the WHS 11 News I team is investigating the tragic story of domestic violence turned deadly in southern Indiana. And right now we continue Laura's Law with more on Laura's story and what steps are being taken to ensure it's not one story that's told again. Here again is WHS 11 Shay McAllister. An Indiana woman living in fear turning to the justice system for protection. Hi, Julie. I need to uh, file a report. Police say she did everything she could to stay safe. But if she did everything right, why is she dead? Right now, there's a lot of finger pointing going on. And that isn't enough. Something has to change. The day before police say Anthony Russell killed his estranged wife, Laura Russell, the Jefferson County, Indiana prosecutor filed a motion to have him arrested for stalking her. Judge Michael Hensley denied it, even though Laura says Anthony violated a no contact order five times, a decision her friends and family say ultimately led to her death. Since then, we've made multiple attempts to contact Judge Hensley. Good morning. Is Judge Hensley in today? But each time our calls went unanswered. So WHAS 11 went to the courthouse and we tracked him down. My name's Shay McAllister with WHAS 11 News. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, hi. Can I ask you a few questions? Uh, I'm not going to comment on the Russell case. I've made a public statement. Judge Hensley refused to answer our questions. You don't want to answer to the public that elected you to serve them, I, protect them? I made a them? public statement and that's all I'm going to make. Okay, well, we're just wondering, Thanks why so. didn't you sign the warrant to have him arrested? Thanks a lot for your service. Uh, I respect the press and the reason uh, the communities need to know. And um, But I've made my public statement. That's all I'm going to make. Do you think if you had made a different decision, Laura Russell might be alive today? I've made my public statement. That's all I'm going to make. WHAS 11 requested that statement. I made my public statement. But the judge never gave it to us. But in a copy given to the Madison Courier, Hensley said he did not issue a warrant because there was not sufficient probable cause. That statement somewhat troubling to the Jefferson County prosecutor Chad Lewis, who says his office goes to great lengths to ensure probable cause is there before filing motions. We look at the facts and the evidence and make a decision. Uh, in this particular case, we believe there was probable cause, um, and that's why we filed the charges we did and sought the arrest warrant. Laura was murdered the day after the prosecutor filed for her killer's arrest. The judge said in the future he would issue a hearing for the arrest warrant the same day it is requested. But Laura's friends and family say 
that's not enough. Laura was a wonderful person and none of us want her death to have been in vain for nothing. Um, and we think there can be no better way to protect her legacy that we make Laura's Law. Laura's Law is an idea those closest to her want drafted onto paper and written into law. If passed, it would require an abuser who violates a protective order to be arrested immediately, not after a hearing, not at the discretion of a judge. Have a good day, Judge. You too. We set up a meeting between Indiana State Representative Terry Gooden, a number of Laura's friends, the county prosecutor, and domestic violence activists, all who have a stake in how future domestic violence is handled. This is what uh, <laughs> democracy is all about. We just don't want her to fade away into nothing. And we want to help potential victims that are out there and not have them go through a similar situation. We may get a product that will help uh, save some lives. Probably no better way to get these laws passed than, as you said, is to put somebody's face with that. With their words now on paper, Gooden says the process won't be simple, but promises to draft the beginnings of this legislation. Hey, Laura. Because even though it's too late to save Laura, the world lost a good person, lost a really good person. It isn't too late to protect others. The hope is Laura will be remembered, not as a victim, but as the woman who helped save countless others by strengthening a weak Indiana law to protect others from suffering the same tragic fate. Hey, Laura. Certainly a powerful story there. Her friends passionate about this cause as well. You've been working on this story for quite some time. So what made people so passionate about getting the, to the bottom of this case and, and getting answers? Well, Doug and Renee, the bottom line here is police said that she did everything right. They said that there was absolutely nothing else she could have done to protect herself. And for that, people want answers. They want to know what are we doing moving forward to make sure that this does not happen again. When she made the call to police saying he's here, he's following me, he's outside my work, did, did they come to, to help her? Did they protect her in any way, do you know? Or did they respond? I know Madison's much smaller than Metro Louisville, but did she get that intervention? Well, the protocol right now is they take those calls, they report on those calls. In order to make an arrest, there needs to be a motion filed to a judge. He has to sign that motion agreeing that there's enough probable cause there. In this case, Judge Michael Hensley did not think there was. All right. Thank you, Shay. Thanks, and Shay. Our efforts on this continuing here tomorrow. WHAS 11 News is on your side as we move on with this conversation here on WHAS 11 News from 4 to 6.30 during our newscast. We're going to be hosting a domestic violence phone bank in our studios with the experts right on hand. We are here to help you. So when you call in, people will be able to answer your questions and help you find resources if you're in the middle of crisis right now. We'll have a special number for you to call coming up tomorrow. Doug, well the reason we're all here today and the reason we were reporting yesterday is because of Laura Russell and the idea to create Laura's Law. What it would do is when an abuser violates any kind of protective order, no contact order, restraining order, they are arrested that day. They are arrested immediately. It's not left to the discretion of a judge. Um, now a lot of Laura's friends and family, family unfortunately asking what more could have been done in this situation? What should they have been doing? And we have Tamara here from the Center for Women and Families. Tamara, what can relatives do when they're not, they're not sure where to turn, they're not sure what to say in a situation of abuse? Right. I think the most important thing is to just make sure that you stay connected to that person. I'm here to file House Bill 1518, which is Laura's law. House Bill 1518. Only a number on a piece of paper, but the meaning is so much deeper. It's protection for those who can no longer protect themselves. It's a change to a system that is full of faults. It's officially known as Laura's Law. When you add a name to a law, that makes it that much more personal. Police say Laura Russell did everything she could to stay safe, turning to the justice system for protection when her relationship turned violent. Her estranged husband, Anthony, violated a no-contact order five times before Laura asked for help again. The county prosecutor filed a motion to have Anthony arrested for stalking Laura, but the superior judge denied that motion. The next day, Laura was dead. We're all human, 
And uh, so as we move forward, we all make mistakes. Not saying that there was a mistake made in this one, but uh, this just gives a second chance to look it over. After Laura was murdered, the judge apologized. But for those who loved Laura most, that wasn't good enough. So they started fighting for Laura's law. Tuesday morning, the bill was filed. It toughens the penalties on those folks who break protective orders. And if someone is on bail and they break a protective order, then that individual is arrested and put immediately back in jail. Gooden says that section alone could have saved Laura's life, but it isn't the only one. Another part of the bill details an opportunity for the prosecutor to request an emergency meeting with the judge if the judge denies a motion. This will give the judge the opportunity and the prosecutor the opportunity to sit down and drill into the case just a little bit deeper. It all starts here in the Indiana State House. The beginnings of a law that could eventually save lives. A law those back in Madison say is desperately needed. I'm hoping that what we've started today will be able to help victims in the future and not have them go through what Laura went through. For Laura's friends, the bill is bittersweet. I think that she would be happy for future victims and for people that will benefit from this law. I don't think she wants anyone to go through what she had to go through. A somber reminder of their beautiful friend, but a token of promise for future victims of domestic violence.